a lot of it is adaptation, right? You're trying to figure out how quickly you can get from point A to point B, while knowing at some points you're going to take steps back. The real question is, can you take more steps forward than backward? You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be an awesome one. Our guest is the CEO of payroll software company called WagePoint, Shrad Rao. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So maybe let's uh, let's start off with uh, telling us about your career journey leading up to this point, and uh, so our listeners can get to know you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So sort of, I always, I kind of have the same thing that I say uh, on most of these podcasts, but I'm going to share that with your listeners as well. I'm sort of one of those people who always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I actually, I always knew I was going to, it was sort of like, there was no choice. So either this or a journalist or an Indiana Jones, you know, those were my Mm -hmm. options. And, uh, no one was hiring it for an Indiana Jones. So I was like, yeah, this seems like a good other alternative. And yeah, so, so you know, I grew up in Dubai, which is, I mean, where I was a teenager, essentially. And then I came to Canada when I was 19, didn't really know anybody, just sort of moved here to go to school at, at UNB. And then from there, uh, I worked uh, for a little while at, uh, at various companies because I had to, because the rules at that time were very inflexible for people who wanted to do anything related to entrepreneurship. But as soon as I became an immigrant to Canada, uh, which was somewhere in 2010, I believe, I basically, like literally the next day or, well, figuratively the next day, I dropped my uh, resignation and I basically said, I'm going to, I'm going to get started. So for me, I'm sort of one of those entrepreneurs, like, you know, that I don't fall in love with my product necessarily, but I fall in love with a problem and I desperately want to solve it. And uh, payroll just seemed like one of those problems that, you know, I thought there was still a, a good market uh, for small businesses and it felt underserved to me, particularly small businesses. And that's really how I got started in this whole space. Wow. So tell us a little bit about that journey. You are the CEO of uh, WagePoint. How do those initial beginnings look? Um, you know, it's it's interesting. To, right now, it feels hard to remember that far back because so much has happened. <laughs> oh my goodness! Since then. Yeah. Um, but it, it depends on the type of entrepreneur you are, right? And that's it's really uh, for me. Like technology, even though I wasn't a technology, uh, like I wasn't a developer or programmer, because I sort of grown up with technology, I just it was second nature to me to sort of think of it as a business that I could get into. If you're really passionate about a specific product, then you really have a very different path. Uh, I know people who are inventors or, you know, people who have just, they just love an idea so much that they desperately want to solve that idea or that, that the specific way of, uh, of, of solving it, their own way of solving it. But I'm not one of those types of entrepreneurs. I'm more of an entrepreneur. I'm more like a business entrepreneur. Like I love the act of business itself. I love the exchange of value. But more than anything else, I love the idea of being able to influence change as, as I see it, it needs to be influenced. Yeah. So for me, as sort of the way that uh, I kind of think of entrepreneurship and particularly building businesses is I was looking for a particular type of business that I wanted to engage in. So I've, I talked a little bit about sort of not falling in love with a product, but a problem. And this is sort of my, this was my general criteria. I was looking for something that had a large TAM, so large total addressable market. I remember thinking at that time that I wanted a painkiller product, not a vitamin product. So something that people had to have, not was nice to have. And I also wanted to trip over customers, as I said it. (laughs) I wanted to be able to find customers anywhere that I went. So whether I was having lunch or if I was, you know, getting my car washed or whatever, I wanted to be able to find 
customers everywhere. And so that was sort of the thesis in which I began to look for the right kind of problem to solve. And it was around that time that I met uh, a gentleman by the name of Bill Murphy, who, who actually had a small payroll company that did everything manually. So it was sort of, when I say manually, I mean, they did use some software, but it was not scalable in any way. And so I looked at the space and I said, well, so it looks like that there is clearly a, a cap uh, to how these businesses can operate because, you know, at some point you'll have to add another body and it just be- basically becomes a business that isn't really tech, it's just services. And so I figured if I could actually build a fully tech SaaS business around payroll um, and particularly targeting to small businesses, uh, that would be an interesting problem because I thought small businesses were underserved. And that's really how I got into payroll in particular. and. The early days of WagePoint, you know, I mean, like in any business, you know, there's a lot of things that you're not prepared for, right? I mean, you as a as a business owner, I'm, I know you know what I mean, and probably a lot of your listeners do as well. You're kind of, a lot of it is adaptation, right? You're trying to figure out how quickly you can get from point A to point B, while knowing at some points you're going to take steps back. The real question is, can you take more steps forward than backward, right? And a simple way of thinking about that is, like, for example, if you just have 10 customers, thinking about HR in your business and performance management is probably not your biggest problem, right? You need to go from 10 customers to possibly more than 10, especially if you're working in a small business land and you're charging, you know, like 40 bucks a pop or whatever for a, a month. So the point is that prioritizing was such an important part of the way we've sort of built the company and also showing discipline and staying focused on that small business customer. So a lot of our early days was just around thinking about what to prioritize and how to talk to the small business customers so that we can actually have the best correlation when the small business customer looks at us and looks at our product and says, those guys, those guys are built for me. And I need to pick them because they are the only guys that would ever make sense because I am a small business and they're speaking to me directly. So that's really how a lot of our our early days went. Beautiful. Well, I love the I love the thinking you did, and it's amazing. Uh, sometimes opportunity just finds people and uh, you know when you start with something a passion that deep that pure around really a love and passion to solving a problem uh the problem found you and you you brought uh, innovation to that problem which i think for our listener is thinking about you know don't build the business based on what you can see or what's just there you build your business based on your desires your dreams what you really want and we talk about it often actually even coming down to just simple clients you get to say who can be your client if you don't know who that should be or could be or who you really want it to be you'll you'll end up with a whole handful of things that you probably don't want and uh, and your story is is one that reflects that and being a customer of WagePoint I can tell you before the way we were doing it prior to to WagePoint was was confusing complicated it was a pain and now I mean I don't even I, I it's almost like I don't have to do anything about it everything just gets done which I absolutely love now we're a very small business we have a couple of staff but your software was relatively easy to set up. I mean, even for a person that that uh, is not familiar with that that end of things, we got it set up, and it runs on autopilot. I mean, that that is fantastic. And so your your ability to solve that problem, pretty darn good. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean, everything you said that just makes me like you know, it makes the days that are difficult just all worth it. I'll tell you the one of the things that we did very early on that your listeners might benefit from, and I think is it's still as relevant today as it was, you know, seven years ago or so. We didn't have anything in terms of a product at that point because building payroll software is, as you can imagine, it's not easy. Mm. And I had found the perfect guy to help me do it, but of course he needed time and you know, he also needed direction, right? Like we knew we were going to be small business focused. And we knew we had to be ruthlessly disciplined about that in the sense that it's very tempting to always want to 
go up market because you think you'll get more fees. And, you know, of course, that recurring revenue is so like, you know, so delicious, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But do you know that the user changes so dramatically at a certain point, uh, their needs change so dramatically that you have to almost even though it's hard, you have to ignore the temptation. You have to stay in your zone because you want to deliver to your exact target market. Now, to make that happen, what we did early on is when we had no product, we put up a landing page. Well, it was more than a landing page. It had multiple pages, but it, it literally had no product attached to it. It was just a payroll services page, basically saying, give us your payroll and on the second page, it was like in the how-to page or something, there was a sneak peek for forms that you would have to sign to get set up. That form got downloaded like some 300 times in the, in the course of like probably six months. And wow. it was that, so everybody that signed up on that form, and again, remember, all they were doing is signing up to get actual you know, electronic forms that they would then enter information into or write in information into. And what we were trying to do at really at that time is we were trying to identify our target customer. We were trying to do customer development with them, which is essentially understand what could we provide them? How do we build this so that somebody who knows nothing about this can use it? So to your point, it may seem like it was, you know, it's sort of something we stumbled upon, but actually it was very deliberate again We spent time talking to every one of those customers, every one of those people that used that form. Not all of them became customers, but we talked to every single one of them and got valuable insights. One of the insights we got is it's probably best if we have the system do most of the thinking because we're dealing with people who really are coming to us sometimes and going, so what is payroll? (laughs) You know what I mean? They're starting at that level. So we actually spent time trying to figure out how to service them in the simplest manner inside the software so that they have to make the least amount of decisions possible. And that's hard to do with any software, but it's particularly hard to do with software that has a subject matter that very few people really understand. Remarkable. So that's one of the reasons why everything you said is is the, the genesis of that started around the time we started building the company. Um, and that's what you're experiencing today. A remarkable. It is an example of what research and collecting of, of information and having conversations and knowing what that problem, that true problem is. And I love the, the concept of staying in your lane or your zone, as you said it, with or stay true to what you actually figured out. Because even just a slight pivot, the needs, the, the conversations, the language uh, change, and it upsets the entire potential business model that you've created. And that supplies to our our listeners, many of them have types of clients that are a fit for them. And yes, it would be attractive to have a much bigger company. But with that comes something different. Whether that is a good thing or not, they have to they have to determine that and make sure that they're making making the right choice. Now we spoke about the the way that you almost make it like automatic and you know call myself an idiot idiot proof for <laughs> for using it right. And I love what you did immediately with uh, COVID-19 and the issues that are coming up with that. And there's in Canada, and I'm sure also in the US, there will be things that the government says, hey, this is what business owners can now do. Well, I know enough to know that most business owners in Canada are going to be absolutely confused and panicking around how to deal with this new 10% subsidy that's been put on to payroll. You were quick to to react and to create technology and modify your technology to enable that to be somewhat automated and simple for business users. So tap of the cap to you for that and maybe tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this COVID thing has obviously come in and <laughs> just ruined all of our lives, right? Mm. Of course, there are people who are really hard hit and, and we know that. So one of the things that has happened outside of the wage subsidy and the, the, or the changes that we have to make in our system almost overnight, the other reality is, you know, I was talking to you earlier that we are at the epicenter of what is really happening on the on Main Street, if you will, with, with small businesses. We see the records of employment coming in for layoffs, uh, temporary layoffs around COVID. And it is it's just ridiculous. Like we are very aware of what happens when someone cannot get access to their employment and in, uh, insurance benefits. So we want to be able to deliver and turn around these ROEs as quickly as possible. 
knowing that somebody may not be able to pay rent or have, you know, maybe not be able to eat food if we don't do that. So we actually have around the clock people now sitting and doing nothing but producing ROEs inside of the company just to be able to make that happen. So just just to talk about the magnitude of, you know, what has just happened inside of our business is we have, it's just, essentially it's gone nuts, right? Because, and, and that's just because we still have jobs and that's great. All these people who are basically, you know, been laid off are obviously in much worse position and we're so acutely aware of what we are, our work means to them. Mm. So that's basically one part of the, <laughs> the situation related to COVID. And then the second thing is, as you said, you know, like we have simultaneous to our entire CS sales, every single body, including I have been doing tickets myself these last few days because I cannot bear to just see our CS team sort of struggling. So I've been jumping in there. I've been canceling all kinds of strategy meetings just to go and do tickets myself. And it's always funny because when a customer gets a ticket from me, it always there's always a little bit of a, I guess, a giggle that happens. And for some reason, I seem to get good ratings. So I'm pretty happy with, with my Perfect. performance so well far. Well done, well done. Yeah. And then on the on the other side, the technology team and the dev team, I, it's been incredible. Like our culture has withstood this COVID thing like I couldn't imagine. Everybody on that team, and that's a fairly large team, have basically come together to do whatever it takes to pull this wage subsidy thing off overnight, literally. The announcement came out on March 18th. We had no direction from anyone, not the CRA, not the Canadian Payroll Association, nobody. We still don't have it. Actually, this legislation is still not out, even now. But we have enough detail. At some point, we had to pull the trigger and say, do we have enough detail that we can make this happen and then sort of almost iterate on the fly? And that decision was made on Saturday. And by Monday, we had uh, it in, implemented in the system. So yeah, it actually goes to show what happens when every single person pulls together for the exact same goal. I was actually just telling them, you know, what we should do is we should start pretending that every time we want to release features, we only just work on one thing because you guys clearly, once it's all, once you've decided, it's very clear that you can streamline everything inside of the company to just focus on that goal. So it's, if anything, it's giving us resiliency as a company. It's also testing our culture and so far, it's really been holding up. And I'm so proud of every single person in the company because of how they've been responding. It's remarkable. And, and that there is the, the silver lining is that, and, and this will be for every single listener, it, it, things will be different. Uh, the, the, there will be some things that are different that it's like, darn, this is, I wish this was not the way that it is. But there's also going to be things that are different that we will celebrate. And I think what you've demonstrated and shared is one of those things, is how to be demonstrating the culture of your business and the, the difference that people are making inside, not only for your business, but also as human beings. They're working hard. They're helping other people. It's changed from, you know, we process something boring payroll to we're helping keep people fed. We're helping people get what they need. What that does for your staff and, and their own self-worth and, and connection to humanity is, is remarkable. So I, I think that's such a, a great message to share with our listener is both the pros and cons of change and you know both it will be challenging and opportunities now you're the ceo of this company obviously there's a lot of uncertainty i mean that's what we're feeding ourselves on right now is pretty much all uncertainty how are you coping with this well i mean you know i think part of it is knowing it's we're all in it together <laughs> you know like there's like, the lack of control is almost freeing in some way there's nothing any one of us can do other than sort of hold on to each other to some extent, right? I think I, even though it is stressful, it is only stressful because we know, again, the impact of our work. And I cannot, like I said, I, I have to be with the troops. Like I'm in there with them all the time. I, I don't think that we are coping any better or worse than anyone else. But as CEO, my job is to basically protect every single person in my company for as long as I can. And that's the exact goal that I have. Like, I, I do think that nobody can predict how this is all going to turn out. And so I'm not even trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm just kind of like taking it a day at a time. My strategy for, I, I still believe that this is, you know, as, as most people do, we, we think this is, you know, there is some end to this. So it's about like, you know, shoring up what we do today, not panicking. Certainly knowing that we have no control. I mean, this is a humanity problem. This isn't a company or even an economy problem. So 
like I said, the lack of control almost is freeing. And I've been just, just holding on for now and then making small plans for the future as we, as we sort of see the clouds part and some lights, uh, some rays shining through. Mm. Uh, But yeah, that's, I mean, my, and that's still my best advice to anyone that asks me what they should do at this time. And I tell them that you should not worry because what can you do? (laughs) <laughs> how will worrying change the situation like literally nobody has caused this I mean although I guess you could say there has been some you know maybe you should be a bit more have more personal responsibility with what people consume right but outside of that what can anyone do that's absolutely right we can't control what we can't control and so we we at these times the best is to focus on what we can control. I was recently reading an email from a previous guest who wrote a book called Three Simple Steps. And really the the premise of that book is to to protect and nurture and guard your mentality. And right now we all have to be hyper aware of what we're consuming, you know, from news and conversations and things that we see. And it can be very challenging people in difficult situations right next to us in order to, for us to, there is other things, there's other inputs, right? There are human beings, good things happening, people helping the story of your company, looking to those things. Maybe it's going to your faith. Maybe it's reading an uplifting uh, book, going into things that will inspire you and bring you back to world. You know, if you, you have your health, you have your health. Wait, that's all you have. So protect yourself and take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. It, it will bring um, a different perspective and that perspective will be one that you'll come from calm and then you can help direct. I mean, our listeners are people that are working with those very people that are requesting those ROEs. They're working with those businesses. And in fact, some of them may be even, you know, flipping the switches on requesting them. The best thing that our listener can do right now is to be an ear for the the owner who not, might not be calm. And uh, it, it, it is the time to serve, to be the calm and reasoning voice for small business owners out there. I totally agree. I'm 100% in agreement with you. But I, and I also think to take it one step further is our job as CEOs or, you know, business owners. And we have, we obviously, you know, many of your listeners have staff just like, just like we do here. Our job is to serve them internally right now because there is a lot of fear, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's afraid for their jobs. Like I, I didn't wait for some of these fears to come uh, alive. I just sort of addressed some of those right away inside the company. I said, we will get through this together. My goal is for all of us to be together with this because no, no, it, this isn't a company problem. This isn't, you know, any, any person has created this. It has come from, you know, uh, like I said, a human global problem. And, I feel like it's like recognizing the generals in my company and then basically being in support of them. That's Mm -hmm. been, I mean, that's just generally the way I think anyway, but getting out of their way, you know, not asking for frequent updates because they're trying to do their job, right? And you just have to trust that in these times, you have to trust that you've picked the right generals and then you really have to just do nothing but serve and support them. And that, that could be anyone on the front lines, that is, you know, is sort of taking those calls, you know, helping the customer, because if they feel supported and protected, they're going to do so much a better job. And that is your job at the end of the day. And that's how the customer really benefits. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. Now, I'm curious to shift into the future. And let's talk a little bit about what you see for your organization and where you're going. And I'd like, I'd love for our listeners to learn a little bit more about WagePoint and, and how you're looking to, you know, you're in Canada, you're in the United States. Tell us a little bit about that journey and then where to from there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, where we're at today, obviously, you know, it's a bit hard sometimes to look in too much into the future, but what I can say is that Beach point, like we've had a pretty stellar growth story. We've gone from, you know, like essentially 500 customers, let's say five years ago to 12,000 customers roughly today. Now, of course, this is 
a bit of an asterisk now because I don't know how many customers are going to be in pause or shutdown mode. So let's just say that, you know, that's kind of where things are at right now. Our goal is to, we will continue to serve the small business owner. That is, that is not going to change. We have other products that we're adding to the suite or rather to our to payrolls to create more of a platform. We think that there's like probably five products that we will own at the end of the day. Um, so of course, payrolls one, time in attendance is another, paid time off is a third, benefits management fourth, and then finally light HR, core HR. So right now we have three products in market, that's payroll, time in attendance, and pay time off uh, management. And then we are probably going to work on the other two in the next couple of years. So the goal really is to continue to build up WagePoint in both client base as well as products. But very honestly speaking, those are all just our, like, and I'm sort of going to go a bit philosophical here because I mean, at least for me, building a business and the whole entrepreneurship journey hasn't just been about any sort of financial compensation or, or monetary sort of situation, although those are great validations to your work and, you know, they helps you sort of quantify the, I guess, the level of success you've had, if you, if you want to, if you want to view it like that. But really the real reason I've, I've always known I was going to be an entrepreneur is because I really believe in sort of curating the company I keep. I care a lot about building communities around me, whether that's a community of customers or a community of employees. For me, culture I've always wanted to build the kind of company where people just kind of are themselves. They can be themselves. And that's actually the biggest thing about Wagepoint. If you ask anyone inside of the company, they will tell you that the culture of the company is probably the most, like from an ego standpoint, from a hierarchy standpoint, it's probably one of the most flat places they've ever worked in. Because every single person is there on equal footing and they have come as people that whoever they are in their normal lives, that's who they are in the company. They don't come in front much or at almost at all. There's very little politics. Of course, there's some amount of little bit delicious gossip here and there, but that's just <laughs> human behavior, right? <laughs> so there's a lot of understanding of what it means to be human and an acceptance of the human condition, as you perfectly said earlier in our conversation. There's a lot of understanding of what that means inside of our company. So nobody is anybody but themselves and therefore they are the best version of themselves because that's just who they are as people. And that is exactly how we think about our customers as well. To your point, there are customers sometimes that will call and curse or say certain really nasty things to, you know, even by email and we fire them because we don't need that stuff in our life. You know what I mean? We don't need customers that badly that we would put up with that as human beings. And so the point I'm trying to make is that the journey of WagePoint is as much about the adding customers and, you know, adding products and making happier customers. But it is also about the idea that we all want to belong to communities and building our small business community and treating our customers like friends. That the friends that we want to have, and because so many of our customers are friends with our CS agents and with our with other people in our company, and that is really the point of wage point at the end of the day, which you know point of wage point is kind of a funny way of saying it, but it's as much about community building and friendship building, which is why we say that we're small business payroll backed by the world's friendly esteem because for us, this is a commitment to each other and to our customers of friendship. And that's the, that's the continued mentality as we continue to grow. My job is to make sure that this mentality con- it sustains past 70 employees, which is where we're at right now, to you know 700 employees, which is where I will hope to be one day. And that's really the core aspect of my job is that. Remarkable. So great, so refreshing to hear a business being built on uh, fundamental principles and, and one that's very simple is being just being a good human being, build a business around that. I mean, this is what you have at the other end is a, a company that people love working with and, and get value working with and have a good time working in and also working with the company. So hat is definitely off to you for building that. And uh, I'd love for you to take a little bit of time and and tell our listeners why they as bookkeeping business owners should be recommending 
this to their clients. Let's let's talk about the benefits and why you see this as being a, a great opportunity for people that don't know or haven't had experience with WagePoint to start doing it. Yeah. And you know, before I even start with the what we can do for you, let me just tell you about who we are. Because that is as if you think about it, what do you guys what do we all want? We want to work with people that we actually want to work with, right? We want to like the people that we work with. So the who we are may actually resonate with who you are. And then you feel like, man, this is the only people that I want to work with. And that's actually how we approach everything. So for example, like I just give you a quick anecdote. We had this one accountant, a uh, bookkeeper that wrote in to us and said, you know, I have to say I was a bit grumpy when I first started talking to you guys. But every single interaction I've had with your team has been so filled with kindness at every level of the company that now I feel like I have no choice but to actually defeat your kindness with more kindness from my side. And that's sort of the idea of sort of, you know, people say paying it forward or whatever, but it's just, we do, we do us in the sense that we just do what's right for what it feels like to be a person. And then everything else sort of just flows out from that. So one thing I will say from the who we are standpoint is, we will always take care of our customers. We will always make the bookkeeper look good for their customer because we care about their customer as much as we care about, as much as the bookkeeper cares about their customer. So we will always have the back of the bookkeeper or accountant partner as well as the customer. So that's just, again, before I tell you what we can do, I want you to know who we are and that's who we are. On the what we can do side is, you know, we built this product for small businesses we want to make sure that the small business and the bookkeeper who is running their practice and who has so many other things in their life, and this is not the most important thing. This should not be the most important thing that they do. This should be just one thing that they do and it should be fast, efficient, and they should be able to get it done as accurately as possible. That is what WagePoint can do for you. It can give you back some time and peace of mind. And like I said, we'll always have your back. I will tell you this, that for us, admitting when we are wrong is as important as taking credit for when we're right. If we have made mistakes, we will say, yep, that's on us. Sorry about that. Here's what we're going to do to fix it. That kind of mentality is because we always think about like our customers as our friends and what how we'd want to treat our friends is exactly how we treat our customers, which is why everything I just told you, we will do whatever it takes to make it right if we do make a mistake. But also when we are helping you, we will make sure that we uh, support you in your, in your service to your customer. And from a product and you know, technology standpoint, we're continuously investing. We are a tech company at the end of the day. That's actually how we were able to turn around the COVID thing so quickly. We're not a payroll company that just happens to do technology, like some of those legacy companies. We are a technology company that does payroll. And so it's just a, if you want to sort of really upgrade your practice, modernize it, Start getting employees access to pay stubs, all that other stuff. You should really check out WagePoint. And then if you just want to work with cool people who will always treat you well, that's another reason you should check out WagePoint. Fantastic reasons to work with WagePoint. And I concur with everything you said. Being a customer, as I mentioned, I, I, it's been that experience for me. And one of the reasons why I was so excited to have you come on the, the, the show and share your story and, you know, it's like, I love Starbucks. And I, when people ask me, where, where's your favorite cup of coffee? When we're in North America, I say, I like going to Starbucks. You know, there's local, little local cafes, but it's because they deliver a great product. I like the spirit of what, what it's all about. I like recommending it. And wage point it falls into that category for me uh, as well. These are, these are difficult times when this episode is aired who the heck knows what will be happening in the world <laughs> at this time. And let's yeah. hope that it's all about the silver linings. Maybe we're silver lining it right now, and maybe we're not, but we can't control that, so we won't worry about it. But we will say this to our listeners, you're wonderful people. You are extremely valuable. This is the time to be with your customers, supporting them, uh, leading for them, and doing the good work that you do. And and uh, WagePoint is is one of those tools that this may be a great time to be looking at retooling, uh, modernizing, and improving the processes and time saving inside of your business, and preparing for the boom that will come after every every setback uh, in the history of of our civilization. 
there will be a boom and there will be a recovery. So be ready for it. And this is the time to be doing it. Yeah, well said. And to just icing on the cake, just to you know go back from a monetary standpoint, which one tends to be cheaper than most competitors, especially legacy competitors. Maybe this is the time even from a cost standpoint that it might make more sense. So, you know, of course, there's a lot of people that are in all kinds of headspaces right now. So whatever is right for you, and I'm talking to you, the listener right now, you do that. Because as Michael said, I think everyone needs to sort of shelter together, protect each other. And, you know, we'll get through this. I'm, I'm, I just like everyone else, I, I think we're all confident that this is not going to go on forever. But yeah, I mean, we absolutely love and support the bookkeeper uh, in small communities, the accountant, everybody that is supporting small businesses, we are in support of them. So yeah, whatever we can do to help, we're always here. Beautiful. Now, Shred, if people were interested in taking a look at WagePoint, what is the best way for them to do that? Um, so they go to wagepoint.com or, you know, if, if they want to connect with me on LinkedIn and, you know, learn some of the tactics that we've used to scale the business, I'm happy to, to share that. You can find me, Shrad Rao, um, on LinkedIn. But yeah, wagepoint.com would be the best uh, resource to go and go check out our blog. There's tons of small business resources there as well. We have a number of uh, bookkeeping and accounting partners. And, you know, like I said, we're, we're built for you guys. So come and take advantage of that because we've spent years trying to get it right for you. Beautiful. Well, with that, we will wrap the episode. And again, Shrad, thank you so much for being on the podcast. And we will provide all of the links that you mentioned in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Michael. And thank you to all your listeners. Beautiful. Well, that is another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. To learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.